In this video, this is a bit of a sped up um, series of clips showing how I made the torsion brackets for the chassis to subframe torsion brackets. Um, I acquired a load of um, galvanized 10 mil, quite heavy duty wall plates, as you can see in this clip, which I then cut to size. Uh, it involved quite a lot of cutting because my um, bandsaw has only got a certain size throat on it and some parts took quite a bit of imagination to put on. But anyway, the upshot is I had to grind down and you'll see in these clips a lot of grinding, which I've speeded up. The grinding is primarily to get a bit of a V-groove going so that um, the wells can actually penetrate all the way down to, you know, all the way through the 10 mil, I guess, um, from both sides. And the reason why Put the v-grooves in with a grinder is to make sure i could um, grind off the weld so it would be flat and seamless um, i didn't really want to see where the wells were and they could potentially interfere with the flatness of the chassis so here you see me grinding 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 i'm basically grinding um all over i'm also trying to take about 10 mil off as well on the flats um just because i need to get rid of the galvanized um, coating on there because gal and welding just does not work um, it causes um, a lot of hissing and the fumes are not good for you either um, and obviously the weld won't be as um, strong so as you can see I'm doing that right now I'm doing that this is the top plate um, the one that's got the funny curve on the back and that curve is designed so that as the bed comes down towards the chassis it'll meet up with the piece of wood that's going to go along the rail and that rail and that wood obviously is fixed so you don't want it to interfere with that as it comes down so i'm putting a bit of a slippery surface by making it rounded and that's the reason why that's there here you see me um tig welding um just because with tig welding nothing moves um because there's no wire coming out so it's easier to secure um the other clip just showed you me putting it on the chassis just to see what it's like I'm going to be using some of this scrap that I got from my scrap guy. It's about six mil thick, maybe five, not sure, quarter inch. And it's going to be making the sides of these as like that. So this is the one that I've finished. So it should look like Should look like that. Here's the other one. No edges to it. This one has edges. So something like that. This one is been primed and sprayed. I've put a bit of a curve on the back. I'll explain that some other time, but I think it's so that it slides better on the bed. If you can see this one's got a corner still. Oh, oh well. Yeah, you can see the roundness there, unlike this one, which has no roundness, but will have roundness. Anyway, let's start. So back to this green stuff. Um, this is what I acquired from my scrapyard man. Again, it's about six mil thick. Uh, look, the camera's just tilted up. But here I'm doing these very odd angles um, so that they fit as supports to those L-shaped brackets. I figured um, it would look better and it has a secondary use in that if the bed shifted at all, they would slide against each other between the bottom bracket and the top bracket. So here's me using my bandsaw, obviously speed it up. Lots of oil. Um, and taking my time because I've broken a few blades before and I didn't really want that to happen again. This stage you see me clamping down the sides which I shaped. I didn't really want to bore you with how I cut all those out because it took forever. You can see it's scrap metal again from my scrapyard man. It's 10 mil thick plate, had heaps of rust on it. So I've actually taken the rust off and you can see me grinding it off. 
I'm using the grinder first and then I'm using a flappy disc to just smooth it off because the grinder does leave quite um, aggressive marks all over. So that's what I'm doing right now with that red disc and it's again sped up because it was pretty tedious. You've got to bear in mind I did, there were two of these weird shapes per bracket. There are four brackets. So that's eight of these and obviously nobody wants to watch someone grinding for millennia. So the insides were ground ready. Um, this is showing a second set that's being um, prepared with a V-groove and also um, removing the galvanized off this stuff because again, like I said, um, gal again is not good for you to breathe in and also it's actually not very good for the weld either. It causes it to um, to be weakened by the um, by the actual stuff getting inside the weld. I think they call it an incursion. Um, and we don't want any of that either. So here I am grinding away. That's the bottom bracket I'm grinding, the one that you can see that funny slotted hole. That slotted hole they're already pre-drilled um, to take the bolts that are gonna hold the um, big rubber bungs that are gonna act as the um, suspension for the actual bed to the chassis so here I am now grinding the top it's very much a repeat of what I showed you earlier on um, perhaps I should have just edited this out but um, like I said I had to do this four times for the top four times for the bottom and it almost looks like it's a repeat of what I've already spoke about earlier on so here I am trying to line up on my limited bench space because I've got so many tools out so um, here I've put the two end brackets, they look like Batman's ears and I'm using the TIG welder again because the TIG welder doesn't push anything so it's easier to spot weld or tack weld bits and pieces um, and I only put a tiny spot on there just enough making sure that everything is straight and reasonably flat because you can always grind those off and cut them off if they're wrong. That little torch there is there because um, I'm basically getting old and um, I need as much light as I can to see um, through that helmet even though I've got it on the lowest setting. But here I am at tack welding on those little brackets I cut with the green metal. Um, I've ground them all back so I didn't show you that. So they're exposed metal. There's a little bit of that red oxide in the middle and the green paint but not much. And now I'm putting those as supports. That one is actually the top bracket that's going to be attached to the bed itself and I will eventually fully weld these with the MIG welder um, if any of you have ever done any TIG welding or MIG welding you'll know that although TIG welding is awesome it's a lot slower with stuff that's heavy duty like this so you can see I'm just putting the rubber bung in there and the bolt just to make sure everything lines up um, this part I'm grinding now is basically an extension um, which I showed you before and I'm clamping it as flat as I can on my welding table um, making sure all the sides are tight uh, I'm basically ready to fabricate it all lining it all up square against the table um, this stuff always takes time but it's worth getting it right and I had to do this like I said for four of them back with the torch so I can see what I'm doing and I'm tacking that extension piece um, at the bottom there as well that will eventually be butted against the chassis so the more material I figure that can be bolted the more surface area the stronger it's going to be it might be over the top I don't know but I figure you know there's only six points of contact on that whole bed to the chassis uh, and they might as well be strong. Um, you'll see that um, later on, which um, I've had to change a few, make a few decision changes, I guess. I wasn't overly happy with the 10 mil or the M10 bolt that was holding the uh, rubber bung on and that slotted hole that you can see right now ends up getting a little bit bigger with a big hole. Here I am offering it up to the chassis. This was one of the middle ones on the driver's side, right next to the leaf spring hanger and the tank bracket tank that holds the fuel tank to your right there. You can just see the tank in the foreground. 
I'm using a marker to mark the holes from the inside of the chassis onto the bracket, uh, ready to take back to the workshop and well, and drill rather. So here I am, ready to drill. So as you can see, I've um, just brought this back from the truck. I've marked the holes out on the back with a marker. So they're gonna be my first holes. I think I'm gonna probably drill all of these. I just got to double check that the nuts will actually fit, or the bolts will fit on the side in here. Looks very close. So here I am drilling the um, holes on the pedestal drill. Um, obviously starting with a small drill bit, like a four or a five, as a pilot hole, um, and obviously then drilling them out. Um, Ever, ever so bigger and bigger um, to take the final size, which is actually, uh, um, if I remember, their uh, M16 nuts and bolts that I'm using, quite solid bolts, um, which I managed to get again from my scrapyard man. Um, they had a huge um, mobile phone receiver antenna tower or something that had to be dismantled. And yeah, I've got a heap of nuts and bolts, all galvanized, high tensile. Here's me drilling the holes with my ever faithful Makita cordless drill. Um, through those holes and back in towards the chassis. Back again at the pedestal drill with a bigger drill bit. I think this is the M16. So I'm going for it here. Um, and I'll tell you what, this took some time um, and a lot of oil. And like I said before, I've got heaps of old transmission oil and that's what I use. Not sure if it's the best, but it's definitely better than doing it dry. I soon learned how to drill more efficiently with this drill bit and also how to sharpen it on a regular basis because it just got blunt um, very quickly. The actual truck chassis is made out of a very hard steel. It's obviously um, a hardened steel of some sort um, to take the rigors of whatever it was designed for and I noticed the drill bits were much easier going through the brackets that I've made than they were going through the chassis of the truck. The truck chassis was really really hard. Um, I destroyed I don't know how many drill bits. Um, you only had to slightly lean the wrong way and that was it. They just snapped like a twig and if I was lucky it only snapped the top 10 mil or something but if I was unlucky it snapped a lot lower down and I had no way of sh resharpening them. Um, here's me doing it again with a slightly bigger drill bit. So this was pretty tedious. This is still the same bracket as you can imagine. Doing this four times for this type of um, bracket and then another two at the back which are slightly different which you'll, you won't see in this video. Um, yeah, it took forever. It was something I don't really want to do again. Uh, and I ended up actually destroying one of my um, cordless Makita drills. It actually burnt out and it does not work anymore. So I had to then get my old faithful Bosch um, power drill, which wasn't as good because they're not as well geared and finish off the job. Anyway, this is me finally finishing one of them, as you can see. And I decided to go with machinery gray as a color. I don't like the black um, and to me having this color just means it's a lot easier to see the um, any issues like oil leaks so I'm actually thinking of because um, I quite like this color um, doing the whole chassis in this color and all the uh, differential and the hubs and everything else underneath the gearbox a lot uh, I, I want to obviously do the engine because I don't really want to mess with that but I think I'm going to go and do that. So here's me, proud as punch, probably wasting too much time spraying um, onto this stuff. Um, and yeah, the holes look a bit random because um, reading the manual, Isuzu manual, about how to drill holes in the chassis, it says there to utilize as many pre-drilled holes as possible or to minimize the amount of holes that you need to drill into the actual chassis so 
I took that on board and wherever I found a hole, I, within reason obviously, because I needed it to match the actual truck bed. So wherever I found a hole in the chassis that lined up where I needed it to, I used that. And then if I had to draw new holes, I did. Most of the holes in the chassis were all M12 sort of sizes, some were M10s. So even the existing holes had to be slightly enlarged to at least an M16, which is what those are that you can see me spraying on that bracket. Um, um, yeah, I think it worked quite well. Like I said, that's first of four, uh, first of six actually. Um, what I did notice with this, if you can see there's some crazing going on there, I think I wiped it with some, uh, I'm not sure if I wiped it with thinners or turps, but something. And I thought I wiped it clean and it's obviously reacted with the paint.